The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. Well, welcome to this teaching. I've titled this teaching, Two Essential Requirements for Healthy Relationships. I come from a family that I've mentioned in the past. It's a large family. I've got a number of uh, brothers and sisters. One of the things that was always stressed to me in growing up was that family comes first, that it's probably related to my parents and our strong Irish heritage where we take care of family. But my parents always reminded us that no matter what, family was something that we had to focus on and we were to never let breakdown separate us as family members. Well, it's a lesson I've learned well and it's carried me through a lot of life as well as all of my brothers and sisters. But, you know, life has ups and downs and there's no perfect family. And it was a little while ago that I actually had a couple serious breakdowns with a few of my sisters. Well, one of the things I absolutely hate in life is relationship breakdowns. I like to get along with everybody and it's really painful, especially when it involves my family. As I was pondering about this, I approached my, one of my sisters and I said, you know, I feel like our relationship has fallen off the tracks. And what I meant by that is I see relationships somewhat like a, a train where if I'm in a relationship with you, say, the two of us are riding together on a train for a while, we come together, and we're on a journey. Now, maybe our ultimate destination may be different, but for a period of time, we walk alongside each other. We ride together on the train. And I had felt like something happened that caused the train to wreck, you know, the you know, it's not every train goes perfectly down the straight tracks. There's times where there's curves, there's hills, there's downhills, there's dangers. And I felt like concerning my relationship with two of my sisters that the train had fallen off the tracks. I pondered that a little bit and I think there's a parallel that I can draw here properly uh, that it's a metaphor we can learn from. I think one of the tracks that a relationship rides on, like the train rides on two tracks. Well, there's two tracks for relationships, and one of those tracks is the track of truth. Now, if you think about that, the more truth that you have in a relationship with another person, the deeper the relationship is. I feel that when, I, when someone really truly knows who I am, then there's a, cl a, a greater closeness. Whereas if it's a superficial relationship, why does it feel that way? Because I don't really know the other person and they don't really know me. They don't have a full picture of the truth concerning uh, each, uh, each other, you know, me towards them, them towards me. Also think about, you know, how can you have a, a really good relationship with someone if, if they're not truthful, if they lie to you, if they are portraying themselves to be someone different than who they are? So I think truth is an absolutely fundamental requirement. It's a track that's necessary, essential for a healthy relationship. And that's truth concerning um, our perception. I'm not talking about doctrinal truth or that, you know, the, the great premises of truth. I'm talking about if I am living in misjudgment about you, in other words, my reality, what I believe to be truthful, isn't, and, this, and vice versa. So we have to fight for truth in relationships, and when we, we get off the track of truth, that relationship's just going to crash and burn. The other rail, I believe, is love. And the reason I say that is uh, I'm not speaking about a sentimental love or a feeling kind of love or, or some kind of close affection. Although those may be present in a relationship, the type of love that I think is fundamental for a very healthy relationship is what the uh, Bible uses, the Greek word agape, and it is a selfless love. It's a love that is sacrificial. It actually is a love that is expressed as devotion 
for the well-being of the other party. In other words, when I'm in a relationship, say with you, I would be more concerned about you and how you are doing than I would about what I'm getting from the relationship. See, this agape kind of love is a giving love. It, it's expressed as concern for others versus my taking care of myself. And I think that sometimes people get off the, the rails, so to speak, their relationship crashes like a train wreck when their focus, their love focuses on how the other person makes them feel. You know, like how, how my wife or my girlfriend would make me feel. Well, that's not the kind of love that's fundamental to a healthy relationship. It's this self-sacrificial love that allows us, that stimulates us, that motivates us to forgive even when forgiveness isn't, isn't uh, earned or deserved. It also allows me to have compassion because I can put myself in the shoes of the other person. I can view the world from how they have seen it. I can have empathy, kindness. So the, the track of love is absolutely required and the track of love will many times help get us back on the track of truth when, we, when that track is broken. You know, going back to the, the relationship I had with my sisters, when I, I met and have talked to both of my sisters, and the essence of the conversation was we realized that we were both living in two different realities. We, the, the, my perception of what was true was different from theirs, which means either both of us were wrong or one or the other was wrong, but we couldn't both be right if there's disparity there. And in talking through it, we realized we both miscommunicated. We have both misjudged. We have both um, misspoken and, and acted wrongfully. And that was because we were committed on the, on the track of love to get the truth track back in order. And ultimately, the relationship was restored. We were more concerned about being back in relationship than who was right because the fact of the matter is many times we're both wrong. So I would encourage you to look at your relationships and to examine them and to see the role of truth and love in them. And if you have some broken relationships, I will guarantee you, love never fails. And if you pursue it, the self-sacrificial love, the love where you're devoted to the other person, you can get your relationships back on track if you're both committed to, the, to riding on the rail of truth and the rail of love.